What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Culture FC, the weekly soccer show where we talk all things surrounding the culture of soccer, but nothing that happens on the pitch. I'm Brendan. I'm Alan. Louie. This week's episode, we covered VAR, or Video Assistant Referees, the pros and cons, whether we like it or don't like it, and where it's going to go from here. So sit tight, relax, grab a drink, and get ready for the action. What's up, guys? How we doing? Hey, man. Can't complain. Chilling. We Enjoying got... this beautiful weather we've yeah, had these last three days. He's in shorts today. Got shorts on. Got yeah. my baggies on. Thanks, Patagonia. <laughs> Shout out. Yeah. Um, no, nah, it's been good. A little nervous today for the United game. Champions I'm League. I'm a little nervous, but I'm confident. And it's a Champions League game. Like, you can't just not fun. be nervous. Did you guys watch yesterday's game? Yeah, yes. It was good. I, got part, I watched parts of it. So we didn't hit both. But I watched the first half. I didn't watch that now. We didn't hit the post twice. twice. <laughs> Great moves, dude. Yeah, Great both, moves. Yeah, that second posts. release, dude. I was still in awe. His goal was like... In my head, I kept thinking, this man's going to get a hat trick of posts. He's going to hit like, <laughs> the crossbar at one point. And I was just like, nah, he's going to complete his hat trick. He's going to hit left post, right post, crossbar. But then he scored, so... Yeah. Nah, he was he was on another level yesterday. But that come, the, the quick, just... Barcelona's just good at, at, yeah. at exposing weakness, and they, they capitalized. Messi finally scored on check. Yeah, right. Yeah. The only other We're team he hasn't Kelsey. scored on. Kelsey, yeah. Sorry. But, um, Stuff hasn't scored on check. No, I think the only team, the only English team he hasn't scored against that he's played is Liverpool. Really? Yeah. He's probably played them once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> oh, but we beat good. them when we did play them. Yeah. It was like 4-0. 2008 or something? Yeah. yeah. Whenever. We were this good. This totally breaks our rule of not speaking about. But it's 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 just, we're this just is, talking. Um, this is the lead up into the podcast. Okay, we can always, well, let's keep leading it up and just kind of jumping into this week's Five topics, five news items, five fantastic topics. The yeah. five things. The five things. It's not Jamaican. Okay. So, starting off with the first one Atlanta United revealed their secondary jersey, but they did so with two chains modeling <laughs> yeah. their jersey, which is really, really cool. Um, their jersey, they call it the King Peach jersey. Yeah. It's supposed to be inspired by like a TIFO that they have at the at the stadium. And a lot of people were complaining and bitching on Twitter about the fact that it's not really a peach color. It's orange and white. It's supposed to be more like peaches and cream versus uh, and then it mm. ended up being orange and white. So then people were like, it's not really peaches and cream. It's more just orange and white. It looks like yeah. a creamsicle yeah. more so than a uh, peaches and cream. Yeah. I, I saw the I saw the unveiling of it. I thought it was pretty cool. But it's like one of those things we're talking about just now. All the rappers and everything's getting thrown into the yeah. thrown into it. But I think it's cool. I mean, True Change is a, as Atlanta as it gets. I mean, he reps Atlanta heavy, and I think he actually went to a game last season. If I'm, um, oh, Titty if Boy, I'm not mis- mistaken. Yeah, Titty Boy went to a game last year. <laughs> Titty Boy, Two Titty Boy. Um, Side note: He actually became famous only because he changed his name to Two Chains. Like labels wouldn't promote him as, as Titty Boy because that's just inappropriate. Oh, that's upsetting. Because yeah. I personally think Titty Boy is a much better <laughs> rap name than Two Chains. I yeah. only know Two Chains as Titty, titty Boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think the jersey is actually pretty nice. I mean, it's like it's it, it's not basic, but it um, I understand. What, I, I will say I like the jersey a lot. I think it yeah. looks really clean. In comparison to all the other MLS jerseys that are coming out this year, it stands out because it seems like this year the MLS decided to go, everybody gets black kits. Everybody apparently has black kits. Uh, yeah. And it's like, sure, it's cool, but everybody has like the same looking style. Yeah. So I kind of like the fact that they went a little better with the, the colors. I mean, a little bit different with the colors on this one. Yeah. I just personally think that if you're going for cream and peaches, go with actual the color of peaches and cream yeah yeah um but all right moving on uh i guess this week's topic is to just break our own rule but basically city lost to wigan uh in the fa cup knocked out um people bitching on twitter about how they didn't they weren't gonna be able to win the quadruple as if yeah. city were ever gonna win the quadruple but anyway that's not the point the point of the whole story was that sergio aguero fought a wigan fan <laughs> and i'm gonna phrase it that way because that's the most important part for me but in reality the city fans just started to once they lost, they started to tear up advertising boards and yeah. just toss them on the field and throw a bunch of stuff at the players on the field. Even Pep and the Wigan manager got yeah. into a little tussle, which was interesting. 
Um, but they literally just went bananas. Yeah, they so tearing it up. So I saw this, and what's interesting is that neither Aguero or Pep following that situation are getting in any trouble. Really? Where I, it seems like huh. we talked about Evra when he got kicked off of Marseille. Same situation, a fan insulting and instigating a fight. He retaliates. It seems like the, I don't. I don't know what happened, obviously, and what triggered it. But it seems like the exact same situation, and Aguero didn't get in trouble. And from a manager's perspective, Pep Guardiola shouldn't be in the in the tunnel fighting anyone. No. <laughs> uh, when Jose Mourinho gets kicked out for kicking a water bottle, it biased. seems a little biased. And even Arsene Wenger, like a lot of these coaches, he he seems to be. Um, Protected a little bit, but that's what was that's. Evra's during the game or after the game? Right before, before the game. The right game. before the game. Yeah, so it wasn't wow. even during. It wasn't even okay. Because I was thinking maybe because it was after yeah. the game that nothing really yeah. happened. But either way, yeah, yeah, they think that they should have totally gotten some kind of repercussion. Yeah. But that just goes to show you, Man City, like but I, well, boys, spoiled I think the clubs are gonna get yeah some stuff, yeah. just not those players. I was seeing, so they're playing Arsenal this week, whatever. But the Twitter people, the Arsenal fans, were like, "Did talk ten points? Did talk ten points?" <laughs> Give us a chance. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Yo, I'll that's... take that. <laughs> yeah, I'll take, I mean, I'll take it. Too, yeah, me too. I'm pretty sure they'd still be in the lead and they'd still <laughs> yeah. win the lead. But it would yeah. be much closer race. Make it race. interesting. Yeah. Make More it interesting. They already, chance. what, 15 points, <laughs> 15 points clear? Yeah. Um, but, all right. Third point. LAFC, the new Los Angeles club, have announced that YouTube TV will be their main kit sponsor. Whoa. But huh. it's not just a kid sponsorship. They are also taking uh, control of our, all broadcasts for uh, any LAFC game. They are doing broadcasts mm-hmm. for directly on YouTube TV. Whoa, that's pretty cool. Anything that isn't nationally televised, which yeah, I think ESPN or Fox Sports owns the nationally yeah. televised MLS games. Yeah. But anything that's local, if you have YouTube TV, huh. you can watch. Whoa, that's pretty cool. How so, much does YouTube TV cost? I think it's, it's it's the same price as what I'm paying for Sling, and Sling is like thirty five bucks, and I'm pretty sure YouTube TV has more channels, so I'm considering yeah. canceling my Sling and doing that. That might be cool. I always just click the dismiss button when YouTube tries to promote yeah. that to yeah. me in the bottom left corner of <laughs> yeah. my YouTube screen. So that might might make me want to watch that. I think that's pretty cool. It it kind of even reminds it. It's really cool that these comp these businesses are getting involved with live streaming and kind of taking away from the cable networks because I really only watch. TV for NBC Sports and Fox to be able to watch soccer games. So if they're if somehow they got all those things into one, I'd just cut. Oh, I, I just think it's awesome because it's like you said. I, I literally don't turn on my TV unless it's yeah. Saturday morning or Sunday morning and it's NBC Wait, Sports. And you now guys it's don't even, you guys don't subscribe to football TV? <laughs> now it's even easier with Comcast because I just talk into my my controller. Uh, yeah. I don't even uh, know the channels anymore. I just soccer. say Manchester United and it throws it on and yeah. I'm good. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. Um, I'm pretty much like you. The fact that I just think it's really cool that it's new age in a way. Yeah. It's like they're adapting yeah. to uh, the newest things happening, which is gonna be the way forward. I mean, no one really wants to be subscribing to to, to cable broadcast or anything like right. that. They want to be on things on the internet. Plus, when you're talking about accessibility and making it easier for fans to engage with it, I mean, for someone that's on a budget, it's definitely easier to just subscribe to yeah. to YouTube uh, and even just targeting TV. a certain demographic. right demographic that's on it. Current, always in front of the TV. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, think screen. about people in LA. They're pretty much spending all their time on YouTube anyway. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. throw vlog um, life, vlog <laughs> life. Um, but I, right. so I'm excited to see that. And it actually, what I liked before I move on, what I liked about it is that they actually showed a little bit of a preview for the kit, and it matches really well with their style. They didn't do anything crazy like what Chevy did and put their huge logo all full yeah. colored right on the kit. Uh, what they did was actually make the colors meld right into cool. the kit, which yeah. is really cool. All right, moving on to the next one. Nike have launched the Jersey Shop, which they are doing it to be able to showcase all of Nike's most visually stunning, most visually creative kits. And they are going to be putting on, you know, a lot of these little collaborations that they've been doing along with regular jerseys, which will be a really cool way for you to be able to go to a place and buy, you know, these more limited edition jersey runs that they have, but as well as a more mainstream jersey too, which is really interesting. Yeah, it's really cool, especially in today's day and age. It, it is showcasing the jerseys and the clubs, but it's also kind of showing you how to rock jerseys in a more fashionable sense, right? To mix it with a pair of joggers or jeans or something like that, which I found awesome because 
yeah, sometimes jerseys can be kind of hard to match with and they kind of clash, but they do a really cool job of, of mixing in the, the actual club with, with the, an aesthetic that's, that's cool. And they must have a plethora of designs that they have collaborated with. Because yeah. I'm sure there are just a bunch of homegrown teams that yeah. can get custom Nike jerseys. So now if Nike just has this like library of all yeah. these ideas that they've right. had, it's like, oh, you know, let's just mass produce this really cool looking one right. and sell that Plus more. Plus it, it helps smaller clubs that uh, sometimes have really cool designs but don't have the marketing ability. Yeah, or the, pla- like, the platform. Oh, this is, a, this is a pretty cool jersey. Let's throw that on and make it make it easy to buy. It really helps the clubs oh, out yeah. because it brings in. I love it. I love the I idea. It's pretty cool. Definitely going to be checking that. Yeah, that's a that's regularly. a plus one for Nike right there. Yeah, thanks Nike. And then moving on to our last point, uh, this happened in Brazil. It was a derby in Bahia between Vitória and Bahia, and the game was abandoned after ten players were sent off. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, how it broke down was a penalty was awarded. The guy scored it. He runs over and starts. Uh, celebrating, kind of like thrusting his hips towards the crowd. And then his whole teammates all around him celebrating with him. The keeper that he scored on, by the way, he sent the keeper the wrong way. Keeper had no chance. It was a really well-taken penalty. Keeper gets up, gets angry with him, chases him behind the goal, pushes him like open-palmed in the back of the head, and then all these guys run over. And these were dudes who weren't even on the pitch, got sent off. They were like, I think four, three of the players were sent off who didn't even, who weren't even playing. They just happened to be on the sideline, came over to fight this one guy. I wish I, I, I watched the video quickly so I didn't hear the, the commentary because I wanted to know what really sparked the fight. Yeah. But basically, the game got completely abandoned because 10 players got sent off. And how insane that is! To, is, is this wasn't crazy. like the peace derby, was it, or something? No, no, clearly no. not. For yeah. sure, if it was, they sent the wrong yeah, right. message. Out to tell you that. <laughs> I watched the video. It's so funny because you can tell how quickly it escalates, just out of nowhere, and then just punches. Pew, 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 pew. Everyone's just throwing punches, haymakers, and usually you don't see that many people get yeah. sent off for an incident like that. You just see like one or two guys get kicked off. It was the Brazilian Derby of Peace abandoned. <laughs> That's <laughs> it was the Derby. Of I, I want to oh, redo the headline. <laughs> so, guys, fifth item: the Brazilian Derby of Peace abandoned after ten players sent off for oh, fighting. That is rich. Uh, and knowing Brazilian soccer and the Brazilian culture, that is so awesome. It's so <laughs> that happened. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so yeah, m- moving on. And before we get into the the main topic of today, which is VAR, I just want to give a quick shout out to my friend Sugru who went to Turkey and got uh, Mia little Galatasaray scarf that we have laid down on the, TV, on the t- uh, table right now. So, yeah, thank you, Sukru, for that. If you have any scarves you want to send us, we'll take them. Yeah, we'll throw the we'll throw our address in uh, in the show notes. We're always looking for new scarves to represent here. So. And we'll give you a shout-out. And no bias. You give us a club that we hate, we'll still throw it up here. Will we? Yes. So you're telling me if someone <laughs> sends us a city city scarf, we're going to put it up I here. will put it up. I'll put it up here. Oh, I'll fuck. respect the fans. Okay. It's okay. about the culture. Yeah, it's all about the culture. But yeah, moving on to today's topic, which is VAR. And VAR is this word that you probably have been hearing a lot if you've been watching any soccer recently or, or even reading any soccer-specific websites. VAR, what is VAR? It's one of these words, if you don't really know, you kind of just hear, you're like, what? yeah, VAR, whatever. But VAR, Video Assistant Referee. It's a new technology that's being introduced into the world's game. And... What it is, is it's a team of people who are working together during matches to review certain decisions made made by the referee in a game. So this team is comprised of a video assistant referee, his assistant, and then the replay monitor. And what they do is actually review the referee decisions, and the decisions that they can review are goals, penalties, red cards, red cards um, mistaken I- identities for awarding a card, and these the decisions they make, they can overturn the referee decisions on the pitch. And the one criteria for this is that it must be a clear, quote unquote, clear error that the referee made that the the video um, video team can go in and look and, and tell if it, if it was a mis- uh, wrong decision. They let the referee know. The referee can then um, overturn his call if it was incorrect. Sorry to cut off, but it, the power still lies with the main referee. With correct? the main referee, the main referee to, still makes the full decision. Regardless, they give they give a um, 
what's the word? They give a suggestion, suggestion to the referee, like, hey, you, you screwed up mm-hmm. here. Uh, take that call back. So, but it's still on him to say no. He still has to be able to stand by his call. Okay, right. He it's still still his final decision. So the referee they can immediately overturn the the call based on the advice, or they can then review the the incident themselves. So if you think of American football, when the ref actually goes up to the, the, the monitor box. and looks, look, yeah, the little box and watches the review for themselves, or they can just ignore the the decision and just stick to their stick to their guns and and continue on with their call. So we've seen that technology is interesting when it's brought into soccer. We saw this. Initially, I think one of the more recent examples is when they brought in goal line technology, right? It was an issue that was trying to solve a problem with incorrect goal calls or goals that weren't given. And one of the things that comes to mind is the 2010 World Cup. Frank Lampard hits a hits a shot against Germany, bar down in the goal, clear, clear for anyone on the replay mm-hmm. that it was a goal, but the ref gives it off. Because it bounces out. It bounces, yeah, it bounced in and then out. So it was hard. I mean, hard for the referee and didn't give the goal, and it was a, it was a crucial goal against Germany that that could have won England the game. wasn't given, and then that really irritates the fans because that's something that obviously you want to see your team score a goal or if a goal is given incorrectly. So FIFA and the world of football started introducing goal line technology, which basically gives the immediate result of a goal to the referee. He he doesn't mess up. So for this introduction, it was good because. It was something that was instant and it wasn't up to the referee. Yeah. Right? It was something and it was solving an issue that fans really, it really pushed fans' minds. So with VAR, you might think, hey, that's a really good, that's a really good um, introduction of technology, but it's it's been seeing a lot of issues, right? So the problem with VAR still is that it's still very much up to referee's decision. Yeah. It's not really removing that human decision from the calls that are happening on the field. So I, I, I know Liverpool had an incident in the, I the think, last, huh? Yeah, a um, um, couple incidents. Yeah, where it they was got... Where they were, like, the linesman, I believe, called offsides, but the ref didn't, like, go with it, and then the linesman actually had to... Or no, it was a penalty. It was a penalty, and the, the linesman called it or something for Tottenham, and the ref didn't agree with it, but then the linesman came over and talked to the ref again and they overturned it and allowed him to have a penalty he missed the penalty but then they got another penalty yeah so it's it's confusing right yeah. and it what a lot of people have been complaining about is that it slows down the game tremendously so my my whole thing with this is that the reason it works in american sports especially in basketball and in football is that american sports take regular breaks they take timeouts tv timeouts all this all this other bs soccer is not a game that ever stops necessarily unless it's for injury you have two you have two halves of 45 minutes they play through that's why the clock doesn't stop the clock clearly just doesn't stop um you've had few different instances a few instances now where var var is being implemented um Seen this in the MLS, seen this in when it's been Im- imp- uh, implemented in England, that it'll take three, four, five, six, seven, eight minutes before a ref, while the ref is walking over from where he is to the TV monitor to review it himself while listening to someone in his ear, while trying to get all of these things. Uh, that slows down the game so much. Mm-hmm. And um, imagine if it's something along the lines of, uh, it's a penalty decision, and your team is feeling hot. Your team is like, mm, we got to hit this. We're on the up. We have the momentum. Yep. We're going. You can, like, the momentum is palpable. You can literally be like, yep. grab it. All of a sudden, you're like, I'm going to step up. I'm going to hit this penalty. It'll be great. All of a sudden, the ref goes, wait, hold on. I got to take a nine-minute break to review whether or not it was a penalty. Right. Which, okay. look, you everybody wants the right call to be made, but I don't personally think that having – the ref either having the referee personally reviewed these calls on a monitor in the middle of the game is the right call right Uh, and so you're about to go up to hit this penalty you're ready for it the guy has to take a nine minute break to just decide okay yeah sure it is a penalty at that point you already lose your momentum yeah and you've been standing around for like eight minutes five minutes whatever it is and you go step up to the penalty and let's say you miss it all of a sudden all your momentum is gone Versus if you got up there, missed it, but then your team was able to capitalize on it and the momentum built again, yeah. there it is. Right. 
And it even benefits the other team. Say, say the other team is winning and they have to defend the penalty. Then it's almost it's, like icing it's, the kicker. It's, yeah, it's icing the kicker. It's playing the clock out. Yeah. And previous to you speaking, I kind of had this idea that oh, VAR's kind of going to be a nice segue into the future of sports and soccer. But I totally didn't think about the fact that we don't take breaks during the half and it's just constant clock running. And I 100% agree with so, the fact. Yeah, and an interesting i hadn't really experienced var because i hadn't watched any real games that had it until i watched united in the fa cup and what really pissed me off for anyone that knows juan mata scores a goal whatever it, it, it gets called off by var but the after scoring the goal the call stands that it was a goal mata is celebrating fans are going wild everyone's happy blah 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 two minutes later ref says no goal so then the, the crowds, when I'm thinking from a fan's perspective, that feels shitty as hell. Yeah. I just went through. I'm celebrating with my with my team. We scored a goal. All of a sudden, that, that goal gets taken off the board, and I'm like, what the hell, man? What, it, it takes away the fans' enjoyment on the on in the stadiums, off outside of the stadiums. Where I'm watching the, re, uh, the replay, and I'm like, well, that's a, that's so, a hard call to make. So that was all ridiculous and all, 100%. Best part of that whole situation was – it's still arguable if Juan Mata was offsides. Right. They used these crazy, crazy lines. Scribbles. Basically, instead yeah, of I taking... It's not like the, the American football where they have those yellow lines for the downs. They honestly... It looked like they had someone just draw on the screen the offsides line, which that's literally against everything against the offsides <laughs> there was ever. a little if you see yeah. the replay there was a little bump right yeah where Mata was. i wanna I'm, i want to find the <laughs> picture. look at it now it's just like a oh, little bump his arms kind of out there <laughs> yeah. we need to put this picture in the show notes because you guys have to see this whoever did it it basically there was a little bump right in front of Mata, and i was like yep yep he's 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 offside right here but he's not basically the other dude's kneecap was keeping juan mata's kneecap onside which <laughs> it, it's it's it was such a uh, for me. It was such a close call that it didn't need to be overturned. It doesn't no. fit into the issue of clear, a clear error, error right? exactly. Which is where VAR is supposed to be used, and which is my biggest problem with VAR still is that they don't really seem to have clear guidelines for when it actually is supposed to be implemented. Because it also puts that puts in not only now are you putting in the judgment of one referee, you're putting in the judgment of three other referees that could be all conflicting on opinions, and you might not actually get. The per the right decision, right? Which is the whole point of VAR mm-hmm. is to give you the right decision. But if you're now getting opinions from two different sources that are saying, "Hey, sure, he was offsides. Sure, he's not offsides." Where is the clarity in that? It doesn't really actually improve the game. From all the instances we've seen so far, there have been very few incidents where they've been super right, and it's actually positively impacted the game and positively impacted the fans watching the game. Yeah, I think that to I think that's the whole issue, right? It's if you implement something it's supposed to make it better. Right. And all this is doing is creating a vacuum of time where people are just standing around doing nothing and then you're just ruining the game because you're not putting anything clear forward that's of any use to anybody. It's right. just like all right, well, let's take some time and get pissed off at each other because we're going to sit here and review stuff. Yeah. Essentially, you've got six guys looking at one game, and yet it's not helping anybody. No. Right. And and you have to think about the fans in the stadium, too. Think it's a rainy day. You're sitting there watching the game, and all of a sudden you're standing there with no real action. It's cold. Rain falling down on you. I mean, that really kills the, the, the passion behind the whole game if you're just getting soaked there. Yeah. Whatever the conditions may be, it really just it doesn't make it – it doesn't make it exciting. And I can almost see it now as a way for them to start injecting ads during the game. We were talking True. about ads and money in the game last week. Okay, hey, we got a review session. Let's throw on a break. Let's oh, you, you don't you think I mean? that they already, they're already they probably already doing that for yeah. MLS. Anytime VR comes up, you don't think they're taking a break to, to or show a new Arby's commercial? Right. Yeah. Yeah. In, in football, they do. They, they go to a quick You're right. commercial they, break. They, every time, it's like because it, it's just wasted space mm. that, that they, they should be making money off of. So... Interestingly enough, they are going to be using this in the World Cup this coming year. Oh, uh, man. Which is, uh, t- I, uh, it seems uh. like it's just not going to be a good use of this. So, uh, at the end of the day, I think that soccer, football is such a uh, momentum 
reliant sport. Not reliant, but it's such a it's a game that has so much momentum involved with yeah. it. It's very different than other kinds of sports where, like, in American football, there's so many breaks that can a team really build any momentum unless they're going very, like, quickly with their yeah, downs or whatever. Right. But in football, in America, or in soccer and, you know, international football, it's a game that it's a, based a lot around momentum. If a right. team starts to play well and press well and start that way, you know, people, like, that's kind of how things flow. Sure, teams score against the, the, the run of flow all the time, or mm-hmm. the run of the flow of the game all the time. But... That's usually like another instance of like, oh wow, that's awesome. They were absorbing the pressure, mm-hmm. came back. It was that like that. It was still a weird part of that momentum uh, situation. Now with VAR, it's just killing the vibes. Yeah, I know that sounds it's really just like, killing our vibes, like, well, dude. Like talking about the World Cup, I think that it still seems like it's in a trial period, and then you're going to be throwing it on the biggest tournament in the world. Yeah, it doesn't seem it's not where it hasn't worked yet in any of the. The, the, the smaller leagues hasn't worked yet in the FA Cup hasn't wor- worked yet and in a lot of these these situations around the world so now why are we just going to fully run this I mean the EPL hasn't implemented this yet leagues across the world haven't implemented the system yet why are we now going to throw this in the biggest stage in the world to possibly cause that much more probably money drama yeah I mean probably to raise the drama and raise the issues but from a fan's perspective I fucking hate it yeah right so what do we think is is a good workaround of VAR? If we are all in agreement that we don't think that the current... So let's break this down, right? VR, VAR came about because of the issues that there were a lot of referees who were being inconsistent with their calls. They were, you know, not seeing plays. Right. They were awarding false... They were awarding uh, cards to the wrong people. The penalty decisions were clearly not being reviewed. Clearly, this seems to be an issue with regards to how to keep refs fair, I guess, or keep them honest. And so VAR was introduced because it's what American sports use. And this actually originated in America. They started testing this out in the U.S. Yeah, I think it was a Red Bull versus someone yeah, else. Second yeah, league. second league game. Yeah, testing U.S. And so it came about in the U.S. Now, we established that there's a problem, right? And, but... We are all, I agree, I believe, in agreeance, agreeance, yeah. agreeance yeah. that um, VAR in its current form is not the answer. So, take a quick second, and we'll start with B. What do you think is the? How do? You, how can you fix VAR? Or do you think there's an issue with VAR? What do you think? How would they make it better? How would they fix it? What do you think they should do? I see two main issues. I think one being. The conflicting ideologies of the people within the booth if they they all probably have different opinions and then the second one being if the ref has the ultimate decision what's to say the ref is in vain and, and just says well i'm sticking with my call because i'm not going to look like a horse's ass yeah. and bring back this call so those are the two main issues i think the major thing that needs to be done is they need to cut down the time they need to make it a much faster process and they can't waste the time and killing right. momentum how is that going to be done? I think it's too early to introduce VAR unless right. it's instantaneous right. and it, it doesn't leave any second chances. So currently now, I think that VAR doesn't need to be in the World Cup. Yeah, so here's my thing. I think that technology has to be up to the pace of the game, right? So if you're thinking about goal line technology, FIFA, no world soccer organization would ever think about hiring a referee to just sit there and watch the goal line and see if a goal goes in and he's the one that calls it, right? Well, no, they did that for the Champions League. Did they? No, they, they had a, a byline ref that was making calls on the, like, for penalties as well. He oh, wasn't okay. just watching that. What I'm saying is, like, you're not necessarily having this one referee that's just watching this one specific thing. If the technology is not there to make a quick decision, a correct decision, don't introduce it. Because in the, at, at the end of the day, you're making a... You're, you might be making the right call, but you have possibility of also making the wrong call. What's the point of that? There's, the, there's no real check then there, right? And if the technology is not there, it, it actually hinders the game because it slows the game down. And soccer is very much f- a fast-flowing game. It, the, there's a reason there's no timeouts. There's a reason why nobody fucking wants timeouts. There's there's the energy and the momentum that you mentioned that is in, it, it's one of the biggest parts of the sport. So if you're now taking that away because you are trying to possibly make the right call, 
Well, you can't really do that five minutes after a play has happened because no. it, it doesn't make any sense. So what do you do now? You're going to you're gonna add those five minutes at the end of the game, you're, it, right? It, it just doesn't, right now, it doesn't make sense because I don't think our technology is there to follow it. The, the, the technology of using the lines, we saw that what well, didn't work for, again, in, the, in the United game. So that's not perfect. If that's not perfect, that's part of the foundation of the system. How can you have something successful? So I don't think I think that I, I love the idea of VAR because from a fan's perspective, you hate seeing a just a atrocious call go against you, an offside goal that's clearly offsides, whatever it may be. But as a fan, I also hate the fact that I'm sitting there waiting for my team's goal to, to maybe be nullified, even when it was a millimeter offsides or a millimeter not offsides, right? So Which, from that perspective, I, I don't like it either. Right. I think that the question of being like a millimeter offside, yes, by the law, the law of the game, one millimeter offside, that is offside. Yeah. But if you're going to break out these computers and these uh, videos to be determining whether a player is one millimeter offside right. and taking up six minutes, seven yeah. minutes of the game, and then, you know, basically rendering the linesman, basically you don't need a linesman. If you right. have VAR, you're going to need one ref and that's it and have videos. Yeah, they'll just have cameras going on either side. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so the way I see VAR, to start off the, the, by saying I don't think the VA, VAR at the World Cup, I find it ridiculous. It's way too soon. They haven't. They haven't. There is no conclusive evidence that this is going to be the way forward for the game, especially in its current form. So why implement it now? I get that the World Cup only comes around every four years, but this isn't like some toy you want to put in front of everybody because it's not perfect yet. It doesn't look good yet. No. You know. Um, and for me, I think the way to fix it is to get rid of it. Personally, yeah. I don't. I yeah. truly don't think. I don't think VAR has any place in football ever. I don't. Yeah, I, even if it were a, a perfectly working system, like if it were an immediate result, you don't. You I don't, don't think that. that there is the ability to have an immediate result because either you're going to render the ref on the field ineffective, or un, like it, you don't need him there because either you're going to have for it to be a hundred percent quick you're gonna have to have one guy in a remote location reviewing the video instantaneously and then saying no that's wrong which is then gonna make and then if he if his decision stands then the ref on the pitch shouldn't needs doesn't need to be there so if every review needs to in terms of offsides is gonna be overturning calls you don't need the refs on the game that's issue one issue two i don't think if if it's gonna be the ref on the field who has the main power then he just needs to be better trained to do a better job Mm -hmm. What were you going to say? I'm sorry. Maybe no, I'm sorry. saying, so hypothetically, this is in the future, because I'm, I'm thinking goal line technology, we couldn't introduce it until we had the technology physically ready to be able to do it. So say down 10, 15 years, we get the technology to make instantaneous calls. Are you okay with it then and then just get rid of a ref? I personally, no, God, no. I personally <laughs> don't think that that technology will really ever come about because I don't, it's, all, it's always going to come down to an issue of how quickly a human can move, right? So if you have the replay now, you're essentially reliant on somebody having to rewind the footage, grab that footage, put it in front of the refs, and then that's what takes the time. It's the ability to grab that replay. And in the NBA, they kind of do it pretty quickly, relatively speaking, but the NBA is used to the stops. In soccer, in football, you, you don't, you're still relying on someone who has to grab that footage, rewind it, play it for this ref, and then send a message via whatever telecommunication device they're using to then get to the ref and say, hey, man, you should review this. He's then going to have to stop play, review it himself. And so I just, to all of that to me, it still relies on humans taking a little bit of time. And that the issue is always going to be time for me. Yeah. If, if soccer had timeouts, sure, whatever, maybe. You, in, you, you review it at the timeout because the ref's usually just standing there anyway. So in a timeout, you'd go and you review it. But soccer doesn't have timeouts. So yeah. for me, I think the issue is, do you want to introduce a fourth or a fifth ref because you technically have a fourth ref on the sideline right. to talk to the managers? I think maybe introduce another fifth ref or a sixth ref and have one on each goal line. I think that's an idea. I think holding our refs more accountable is a better idea. Yeah. Re, re, I think that a lot of times people want to put technology into things that don't necessarily need right. technology. For me, it's a matter of can you potentially better train these refs? Can you potentially go through these new training modules where they are more expo they're exposed to more uh, diversity and they're able to make better calls? Right. Is there a way you could do it that way? I think that is where we should be going, not trying to solve smaller issues with big technology that isn't ready for it yet. So two things that your point brings up that I really like. One, 
I think oftentimes we think of referees as almost an accessory to the game, where a lot of fans in the sport of soccer actually, they hate wrong calls, but they love the aspect of the human element in refereeing, right? A lot of people argue that the human element of refereeing plays an important role in the game because it's kind of what makes it exciting. You know what I mean? Yeah, it almost, almost like dictates you the get the play. wrong call, sure, but the, if the karma goes around and eventually your your everything is okay. At the end of the season, you get the, the wrong calls against you, and then you get the, the equal balance of right calls, which is an interesting thing. I don't I think any other sport in the world fans have that insight into the game. We're like, hey, these referees they can't really make every single call, which I think is a really cool perspective on it because it is hard to referees go through a lot especially in the sport of soccer they're probably the most berated referee in in any sport uh globally i mean in most country in a large number of countries referees are surrounded by uh four to five police arm heavily armed police guards following <laughs> halftime and at the end of the game right so that's a lot of pressure for a person that's really just refereeing a sport. Yeah, and even in the Premier League, I mean, we know like referees' names, and we know which <laughs> referees we yeah. fucking hate. Right? Playing You're like, with. this guy's refereeing this game. Fuck, we're gonna get yeah, a red card. Dude. Exactly. So, I, I think that's really cool, and I think that that that's a perspective that a lot of people from a different sports don't necessarily see. Is that fans are somewhat compassionate to the referees, even though they fucking hate him. They know <laughs> that that's not that 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 is not an easy job, and they know that it's kind of part of the game to you're gonna get a bad call every now and then yeah so it's, it's a human yeah i think it's interesting like you said uh a soccer game isn't played by just two teams of 11 the guy in the middle is still technically part of the game for right. us we see refs in the nfl as like uh they're there to make the game move along right? right or they're like kind of like you said an accessory or they're extra they're there apart from the game to maintain things in soccer, we view it as there's two teams of 11 and three dudes on the field. It's all one thing. We don't separate it out. And so right. for us, you're either going to discredit your refs with VAR or, you know, I keep going on about this, but I'm just going to move on from now. Yeah. No. Okay. But I think that in general, I, I think my, my view on it is I, I, I think that there can be better – there can be a better way of treating referees in the sense that right now they're kind of treated without any repercussions. Mm -hmm. In most leagues across the world, if you comment on a referee's bad decision, you get fined. I don't think that that in, in for that position in that job, you need to be able to take criticism because the criticism there, it might be very emotionally fueled, but it can prompt you to start implementing better tactics of training people like you mentioned, Louie, to you can always better yourself in anything in life right so if the referees are dodging criticisms then it really kind of shrouds them from ever having to go look for a better way to do something maybe introdu introduce two new refs maybe introduce some new training tactic because they won't ever see their fa faults because people are getting are afraid of getting charged ten, ten, tens of thousands of dollars tens of thousands of euros so i do th think that that there has to be a better consideration and say, yes, it's a high-pressure job, but it's also high-pressure for the players. It's also high-pressure for the managers. It's also high-pressure for anyone involved with yeah, the sport. That so shouldn't be an I think that there has to be a higher standard for the refereeing and allowing people to criticize them, as long as it's not something that isn't truly insulting, obviously. But if you're criticizing the way that a, a game is being refereed, you shouldn't be penalized for that. So I think, yeah, fuck VAR. Get, get rid of it. <laughs> rid of I, I don't want to see it at the World Cup. I have a, a, like a, a, a knot in my stomach. I have a feeling that it's going to just fuck something up so bad. So um, I'm good with it if they just got decided to get rid of it. Me too. But best part about VAR, though, this is going to be hilarious. If in the World Cup a really bad call gets made by a referee, like some blatant handball or like some really bad offside goal, and then 
VAR overturns it and makes the right call. Everyone's like, VAR in! VAR in! Yeah, VAR yeah, in! Yeah, yeah, yeah. VAR in! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's part just the fickleness of soccer yeah. fans. It's so, just like such here's the best part. Transition. Keep, t- like, stay tuned to Culture FC. We will probably record a podcast in August of this year. And we're probably going to be doing a VAR in episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, wait. Yeah, wait until Major Center bro, is successful with the VAR. Call today and say V and I'm going to, next week, I'm coming. Oh, yeah. Just VAR oh, actually, in. I'm saying in August. Let's <laughs> pretend that later today, I don't know why. United game and there's an issue with it. We'll be VAR next week. Yeah. Next week we're doing a VAR episode. We're easily persuaded. Yeah. Over here. Uh, yeah. All right. I think that that wraps it up. Short short episode this week. Later. Later. So there you have it, guys. Another awesome episode of Culture FC. It was really cool to be able to sit down and dive into VAR because it has been making the headlines lately. And it was really cool to get our perspective on it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Give us that five star review on iTunes on Google Play. It really means the world to us. And it just gets more listeners involved. And share it with a friend. Share it on Twitter. Share it on Facebook. Share it on Instagram. Oh, and uh, don't forget to check out Trouble Wear. That is our clothing brand. It is TroubleWear.com. T-R-E-B-L-W-E-A-R.com. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. We have a bunch of really cool items coming out in the next couple weeks. And you'll get first access if you sign up for the newsletter. Thank you for listening. We'll see you guys next week.